Today, I'm going to show you how to build a Greengrass component that subscribes to ROS2 messages, converts them to MQTT messages, and publishes them to AWS IoT Core. Hi, and welcome to Mike Likes Robots, where we share knowledge to accelerate robotics. In previous videos, I've shown you how to set up your robots to connect to IoT Core directly or through a Greengrass server, so that there's only one connection point to the internet. Today, I want to show you an alternative method which is building a custom component that can subscribe to ROS2 instead. I want to talk about the pros and cons of this method and then show you how to set it up and see it working. Let's start by talking about the previous method, setting up your robots to talk to IoT Core directly. In this method, what we can do is go to IoT Core and create a thing per robot, then use that to create a certificate for the robot. This is what your robot can use to authenticate with IoT Core and then publish messages to it, authentication and authorization. This method means that you need to create a certificate per robot, and it also means that any topic that you want to convert has to be done manually. That is, you need to write the code for it and put that code on the robot. There's an extension to this method where you can use a Greengrass server, and instead of connecting your ROS2 robots directly to the cloud, you instead connect them to the Greengrass core. This accomplishes a similar thing, but with some advantages. There's only one connection point with the cloud, it's easier to configure the Greengrass server from the cloud, and you can set up extra components on your Greengrass server to help with extra functionality, like being able to do secure tunneling. However, with this new method, we don't need to make any changes to the robots at all. Instead, what we're doing is creating a Greengrass component that you can configure with a list of ROS2 topics to subscribe to. The component then automatically subscribes to those topics, figures out what types of messages they're sending, and automatically converts those to JSON and publishes them to the cloud. That means you don't need a certificate per robot. You only need to provide a certificate for Greengrass, and that's set up automatically when you install Greengrass. It also means there's no manual coding. Everything is set up automatically. The only time this isn't true is when you need to use a custom message or a message from a package in which case you need to install that in your Greengrass component as well, so it has access to it. However, this method does have a couple of downsides. To begin with, it's now not as secure. That is, because there's no certificate that Greengrass can use for authentication, it doesn't know whether it's a real robot sending a message or an attacker pretending to be that robot. That means you should only use this in a trusted environment or have some other way to secure your ROS2 network. The other downside is that the component by default only has the ROS2 inbuilt messages available to it. If you provide any of your own custom messages or install any from packages, you'll need to also find a way to provide those to the Greengrass component or it will fail to import and convert those messages. If those downsides don't sound too bad, then follow along in the next section as I show you how to set this demo up and see it working. To show you how to build the Greengrass component, I'm going to be using this sample application, which will be linked in the description. What the sample application contains is a Greengrass component that contains a Docker file, and the Docker file points to two Docker images that are built, all from within this repository. This setup is described in my other video, which I'll link at the top and in the description, which shows an example setup for being able to build Docker images and Greengrass components within the same repository. So what I'm going to do is create an EC2 instance and then start to install the prerequisites and clone the code in order to build the Greengrass component. And here I am in the EC2 instance. The first thing to do when you create a new instance or run a new machine is make sure everything's up to date. So we're just going to do an apt update and upgrade. With that complete, I can begin by installing a few prerequisites. Now, if you want to follow along yourself, you can follow the video, or there's also a blog post for this that I'll link in the description. You can copy the text directly out and into your console for it to work. Now, I'm using Ubuntu 24.04, which does change a bit of the workflow using pip to install packages, so you may notice some differences in the commands for your own system. Prerequisites that we're going to install include Docker, the AWS CLI, and the Greengrass Development Kit. So let's install each of those and make sure that they're functioning. First, the AWS CLI. So I'll paste this command in. And this is the standard command for installing the CLI. I'll link the documentation for how to do this. 
With the CLI installed, we need to make sure we have some credentials. I'm going to attach a role to my EC2 instance that gives it full admin permissions, but the way you set your credentials may be different. And we can check this is working by using the CLI to get the caller identity. For me, that's working, so I can proceed to the next step, which is to install Docker. Again, the documentation will be linked in the description, but the simplest way to install Docker is to use the provided installation script from getdocker.com. Now I'm going to add my user to the Docker group so I can run any container I like, and then activate the group so I have access within the same session. Now I can run Hello World to make sure that everything is working. That's working, and I can also check that Docker Compose is installed, and that's working correctly. Now for our third prerequisite, the Greengrass Development Kit. For this, we'll use pipx to create a virtual environment automatically and install the toolkit within it. Now we can either restart the terminal session or source bash rc to get access to that new toolkit. Now I can check the help text to see the tool is installed properly. And that's it. All of our prerequisites are installed. Now we can look at cloning the code and building that component. I'm going to clone the code and then update the submodules to check out any dependent repositories that it's got. Part of setting up this repository is that it needs ECR, that's Elastic Container Registry Entries, to be able to push the Docker containers to the AWS account. For that, you'll need to create them. Or in my case, if they already exist, you can skip this command and move on to the next step. The next step is to configure the environment file to include the base URI of your Elastic Container Registries. So if you take the URI from one of your registries and strip off the container name, that will be the base URI. I've also provided a command that will automatically retrieve it for you and insert it into the .env file, which I'll use here. Now I'm ready to build and publish the Docker images and the Greengrass component ready for use. And that's the publish complete. Now, in my case here, the component already existed from a build I did earlier, but in your case, it should upload just fine and create that version. So we can now clear this and the component is ready to install on a Greengrass server. But before we try that out for ourselves, let's first take a look at what is happening inside the repository. Now there's two main folders that we're interested in here. The first is the components folder, which contains any Greengrass component that you want to build as part of this workspace. In this case, there's only one, which is the ROS to MQTT converter. So if we take a look at this, there's a build script, which isn't very interesting to us, a GDK config script, which again, isn't very interesting to us, but the Docker compose file and the recipe are more interesting. So in this Docker compose, if we take a look, we can see we have the ROS to MQTT converter container. This is what's doing the job of subscribing to ROS2 topics, converting them to MQTT messages, and then publishing them through Greengrass to IoT core. We also have these three containers, the robot containers. All these are doing is publishing mock telemetry for the converter container to convert. We could easily strip these out and the converter would work just fine, but we'd need to have some ROS2 topics ready for it to listen to if we wanted to see it working. Now, if we look at the recipe for this component, we can see that there is some configuration for publishing and subscribing to local PubSub topics. That's how this component works. It subscribes to ROS2 topics using normal network transactions, and then it publishes those messages using local PubSub to Greengrass. Other Greengrass components are then responsible for taking those messages and publishing them to IoT Core. We can also see that it requires the ROS2 topics configuration parameter. This is a list of ROS2 topics that we pass to the component when we deploy it, and it will attempt to subscribe to those topics by looking them up, figuring out what message type they contain, and then subscribing to that topic with that message type. The other folder we're interested in is the Docker folder, which contains our two Docker images. The first one is simply a link to the existing AWS samples repository, which contains code for connecting ROS2 robots to IoT Core. We're using this purely for the mock telemetry, but if you'd like to learn more about how to connect a robot to IoT Core directly with no need for Greengrass, this is a great place to take a look. We also have the converter package, which contains a ROS2 node. And if we open this up and find converter.py, 
we can see how the node functions. When it starts up, it creates an IPC client, which it uses to publish messages to Greengrass. Now, if this component isn't running as a Greengrass component, it will fail at this point because it can't find the Greengrass core device to connect to, or it doesn't have permission. However, if it gets past that point, it then parses out all of its topics that it needs to subscribe to from the ROS2 topics parameter, and then tries to subscribe to all of those topics. In addition to this, it has a timer so that it can periodically try and update its subscriptions. In the case where you tell it to subscribe to a topic that doesn't exist when the component starts up, this timer callback function means that it will try again later when the topic becomes available. Inside the update subscriptions function, we can see that it looks up all of the topic names and types using a ROS2 function call. It then figures out which of those topics in its config it wants to subscribe to. If it's already subscribed, it skips. If the topic is subscribed, but the topic doesn't exist anymore, then unsubscribe from it because that topic has disappeared. And if the topic should be subscribed to and doesn't currently have a subscription, then subscribe to it using the subscribe to function. We take a look at the subscribe to function. What it does is figure out the path to dynamically load the message type from. Now this will work every time as long as it's an inbuilt ROS2 message type. However, if you have custom message types or you're installing them from packages, you will need to make sure that your Greengrass component has these available in some way. They need to be on the Python path so that this component can load them properly. If it is available, then the import will succeed and the node will subscribe to it, where every time it receives a message on that topic, it will call its own callback function. The callback function is very simple. It creates the MQTT topic it wants to publish on, and then converts the message into an MQTT message using the message to order dict function. This is another ROS2 built-in method, which takes a ROS2 message, and if it understands how to deserialize it, can convert it to a Python ordered dictionary, which makes it then very easy for us to convert to JSON. Then it publishes using the IPC client. So that's all of the brains of the converter node in one page in just a few function calls. Now the story doesn't stop when the message is passed to Greengrass to be published. In order to test this repository out, I've provided this script to easily set up a Greengrass server on the local instance. It will just download and install the Greengrass server using some default names, although you may need to change the region that you're deploying to. And then it will automatically create a deployment with the required components to that Greengrass server. The required components are in this deployment config. And this shows us how the data flows from ROS2 robot all the way to IoT core. By using the EMQX component, we have an MQTT broker from Greengrass ready to use. This is the part that's doing the publish to IoT core. We also have this bridge component. This has a configuration to forward any message on local PubSub to IoT core. Then we have Docker application manager for running Docker containers, and our custom component with a few ROS2 topics already ready to go. The robot one mock telemetry topics and the same for robots two and three are what we use to subscribe to the three robots in the Docker compose file that I showed before. So altogether, that means we have three robot containers producing mock data, a converter container that converts that data into MQTT messages and passes it to Greengrass. We have a bridge which is listening for messages on that topic and knows to publish it to IoT Core. And we have the EMQX MQTT broker, which the bridge is using to publish to IoT Core. And that's our complete data flow from a ROS2 robot on the network all the way into the cloud. Let's see it in action by running this script and checking the MQTT test client. Now back in our EC2 instance, there's one extra dependency to install to be able to run Greengrass, and that's a Java runtime environment. With that complete, we can now run the provided setup script to install Greengrass automatically with the components we need. Now with that deployment ID coming through, our Greengrass core device is up and running and it's starting to receive the deployment. And we can check how it's doing by watching Docker PS to see when the Docker containers come up.
And now the containers have started up and we can see our three identical containers for the robots with different namespaces and our converter node. So now if we take a look at the MQTT test client, we should be able to see those messages coming through. We can open up the test client. I'll put the link in the description and then subscribe to hash. And if we do that, we can see the mock telemetry messages coming through fairly frequently, all with different namespaces and all with our JSON data. Now we never told the converter what message type those topics would contain. We just gave it the topics to subscribe to. That means that it's automatically identifying the message type and converting it. This should work for any message that the converter is able to access the ROS2 message format for. We can also check the configuration for the converter and we can see here that there's three topics contained within the list. Now we could revise this deployment and add or remove topics as we need. Now, if you're setting this up for your system, you can identify the topics on the network, list the ones that you want to subscribe to and send to the cloud, and then revise your deployment with those topics in order to get access to them in the cloud. And that's the demo complete. We've seen how to set up an EC2 instance from a blank Ubuntu image, all the way to pushing our data into the cloud with just a few dependencies and a sample repository. So there we have it. We've seen a custom Greengrass component automatically subscribe to a number of topics from different robots and automatically convert and publish those messages to IoT Core. Now you can take the sample application and start working on it for yourself. One point I'd advise is taking out the mock data generation because this is only to show the component working. You can strip that Docker image out completely and remove it from the compose file and then start to work with it with your actual ROS2 robot fleet or even connect it to a simulation as I showed in my O3DE video, which I'll link at the top and in the description. You can also take a look at my videos on ingesting data into AWS IoT SiteWise or taking logs and putting them into CloudWatch logs, both of which rely on the individual robot method, but you could convert those to work with this new method. That means that all you have to do is install a server on the same network as your ROS2 robots and then deploy some cloud infrastructure to be able to ingest data via IoT Core and use that data to get actual insights into your fleet. Let me know what you managed to build with this setup and I'll see you in the next one.